Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I'm getting used to saying that now. So <laughs> seems kind of funny to come on on Wednesday. But, you know, I'm, I'm liking coming on during the middle of the week. I can get home in time and I can get a little supper even. So it's working out nice to be able to come home on, on a weeknight and, and teach a class. So it's not, it, when I get off work at when I get off work at five, it's a lot different than we're getting off work at six. So for years and years and years, I didn't get off. The earliest I got off was six. And so, um, in fact, for a lot of years, I was at the store um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday until eight or nine o'clock every night. So I, you know, for years we were in the mall, in a mall. So I worked the night shift and. So it's been kind of nice to come home and have an evening. So weird. Do you like do you like the the Wednesdays so far? So I did have a very nice weekend. So who asked that? Oh, Denise. Yes, I had a very nice weekend. I finished my that that quilt. I put it up on the group. I finished my um, Claudia Donnell, Claudia's Creations. It's called Tis the Season. And I've been working on that for like four years. So I started it and I had the whole center part done about four years ago. And then, you know, my dad kind of got sick and I wasn't, I wasn't home very much. And, and, uh, I, I worked on it, um, 4th of July weekend and finished the borders. And then I quilted it on Sunday. So I got up on Sunday and I said, I'm going to quilt this. I was, I was worried about it because I wasn't, uh, I, I was a little uncomfortable starting it. I was scared because it was, you know, a big project and I had worked so hard on it. I didn't want to ruin it. So I, uh, it, I thought it turned out really well. I was very pleased with it. So you'll have to go look on the group. If you haven't seen it, go take a look and see what it looks like. So hi everybody, people are coming in. Yeah, it really is pretty. I, I'm, in fact, I'm sitting here looking at it. It's right behind my computer here, right in front of me. And uh, I hung it up on the wall. I don't hang a lot of my stuff up. Um, I take a lot of it to the store. And I thought, this is mine. So I'm going to hang it up and leave it here at home. It's big. It's like, um, I think it was 67 by 67. Very, you know, it's big square. I was surprised at how large it was when I got it done. <laughs> so, hi, everybody. So you're ready to do a little bit. How did I quilt it? I quilted it with my long arm. It's so big. It, I could have done it on the embroidery machine, but it's kind of big for me. I don't usually do anything that large on my embroidery machine. It just takes, um, it just takes so long <laughs> to quilt. You know, you have to hoop it so many times. So I, I put this on my long arm and I just quilted it with an overall pattern. I'm not sure who, Oh, was it Car Carol? Carol, yeah. So I, I, um, I just quilted with an overall pattern. Believe it or not, um, you can see the stitches a little bit on the satin stitches. And if you look back, go back and look at the picture. There's satin stitch like borders that that are in the center, and you can see, um, you can see the stitches on the satin stitches a little bit. But like the rest of it, um, the all the, the rest of the embroidery, you can't see the stitches at all. I mean, they're like, you know, it was sort of like a motif style stitch and um, that was in the embroidery itself. And, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you can't really see it at all. So, but, um, and what kind of thread did I use? I use Madeira or a quilt quilting thread. And that's what I used on it. It's, it's like a number 50 thread, but it's a poly cotton blend. And um, that's what I've used. And I used white because I, I chose the color that most of the background was and it was white. So, so yeah, it was really fun to do. I was really nervous getting it started because I, I kind of found a pattern I thought that would work. It's not like overly busy, but it's got a little interest to it. And so, yeah. And then I had a, kind of a little rumply on, on the bottom border just a little bit um because i had i should have put shape flex on the borders because the all the rest of the quilt had shape flex on it and just the borders didn't so i probably should have put a little shape flex on just to give it a little bit more body um but it looks fine it's i was able to work the you know 
the little rumples out um, as I was quilting it. So it, it actually looks really good. So, so I liked it. It was fun. That was, that was, a. I was really, <laughs> I was nervous. And the, after the first row, I sent a picture to my friend, Judy. And I said, Judy, what do you think of this before I go any further? Because I didn't really want to have to pull out the whole quilt, you know, rip out the whole quilt. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Uh, but it is quite large. You would have to hoop it a lot of times. Yeah. I mean, you could do it with the Kimber Belt, like the clear blue tiles. Yes. But it is big and it would require a lot of hooping. So I do have a long arm. So I usually put my bigger stuff on the long arm and, and run it that way because it's a little bit easier. You only have to hoop it once then instead of like 70 times. <laughs> I've done quilts that I've had to hoop 70 times, but it is it is a little time consuming. So I like to quilt them. I like to hoop them once on the long arm if I can. So. So anyway, that was what I did this weekend. That was my first official weekend off. So I had I had fun uh, doing that and I got a project done that I it was a long time project. So I think it, I started it about four years ago. I went back and looked and I think it was about four years ago that I started and I had the whole center done, but I never did get the, I never did get the rest of it done until 4th of July weekend when I had four days off. So anyway, I did really enjoy quilting it after I got over that first row, I was just worried <laughs> that it wasn't going to look good. So anyway, I did, I got it done. So it, uh, it was fun doing it. And I like to quilt. I really actually like to quilt with my long arm. So it was really fun. And I think the, design was called curly edge to edge and it was from my creative stitches is what is the pattern I used on it so anyway I thought it looked really good I, I'm very pleased with it so I'm so glad when it's done and the bindings on it of course and everything too so the bindings on and it's hanging on the wall so all right so tonight we're gonna make some owls we're gonna work on um, the September embroidery here second. Let me get my um, banner turned off here. Hide that. There we go. And we're gonna make we're gonna make owls. Now these little guys take a little while. There's five appliques in these, and they turn out very cute. So what I did is give me a second here. I'm gonna put this back up here. Um, I did do a few of them in advance so that they were done because it takes, you know, it'll take us an hour to, to embroider them, even though it says 19 minutes. It's, you know, there's a lot of appliques. Um, and so that's what we're going to do today. And then next week, I wanted to show you these. I don't think I, I showed you these the other day. These are the next week is candy wrapper zipper bag day. So next Wednesday, we're going to make the little zipper bags. So this is, this was a Hershey's, um, milk chocolate snack size candy bar bag. And this one, just so you know, if you have a bag that you're gonna try this with, if it has a clear spot, see this had a little clear spot on it. So I just put a piece of fabric in there over the batting and then and then I put the lining as the same as that. So this is, this is um, what I did with, I had a little clear spot here and there was actually, you can't really see it very much. It was almost up to the zipper right here. There was a little clear spot on the back. So I just put a little piece of fabric. So just be aware, look at your bag. And if you got a clear spot, you, you're going to want to grab some fabric to cover that up. And then this one was a lifesaver bag. So this is my lifesaver bag, the front and the back of it. Isn't that, isn't that cute? And then this one had, I think I put green. Yeah, I put green inside too on this one for the lining. So you will need a little piece of lining. I can't really tell you exactly how much because you're going to have to measure your bag when it's all done because they're all, you know, unstandard. So whatever size your, your bag is, that's what size you need to make your lining pieces and everything. So we'll talk about that next week, but I wanted to show you the bag. So these are the little zipper bags, okay, that we're going to make. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to make next week. I think I have a, I'm trying to remember, I think I have a, um, a Hershey's, maybe a Hershey's um, peanut butter cup. I think I have a peanut butter cup bag and, and there was one other bag I had. So I have a couple other bags. Yes, we're going to do this in IQ Designer. I did the quilting part in IQ Designer, yes. 
And this is the one, one of the ones that I made in the class, you know, when we did the PE design class, this is the one of the, the ones that I did in that. Yes, they are real candy bags. Yes. So my friend Lynn sent me some bags because I don't really eat candy. And she had some bags saved away from several years ago. So this is an actual Hershey's candy bag, like a like the little snack size candy bars. And then this was a Lifesavers mint bag. Yes. So isn't that cool? So this is what we're going to make next week. They, they are fun. So you'll have to you'll have to forgive me. I may I may fumble through the sewing. I always mess up my first bag, so I usually have to rip. So you may get to watch me rip next week. <laughs> so so anyway, we're gonna hand, we're gonna sew these together with a sewing machine. We're not gonna do the sewing part in the embroidery machine. We'll do them just do them in the sewing machine. But we'll do the quilting in the embroidery machine. So I quilted the front and the back, and I used the front and the back of the bag. So you could use. Um, you could use like two fronts if you don't like the back of the bag. You could use front and back or just two fronts. Sometimes if I have two bags, I'll use the front on, on both sides, but I didn't on this one. So I just used the backs. Okay. The only bad thing about the backs is they usually tell you how many calories there are in the candy that you ate. So <laughs> I don't always like that. <laughs> okay. So that's what we're doing next week. And of course, we're going to have a drawing at the end of class. Oh, yeah. So, so every now and then I have to rip. So we'll see how Jan does with the zippers next week. <laughs> I I always have to watch the little video that I found years ago when I started making these to watch to make sure that I get them lined up correctly. So anyway, and so the prize tonight, remember, if you make a comment, you get, whoops, sorry, I'm having a cat attack here. Um, the, the prize will be Remember last Thursday, we made this little ironing mat on, on uh, Shields Live. So whoever, this will be in, whoever, you have to comment, make sure you make comments, and then you will be entered to win this little prize, and I will mail this to you. So this is the little hoop mat or the little ironing pad that I made last Thursday on Shields Live. So that's what the prize is tonight, okay, with the little Mickey on there. So, Okay. All right, so that's the, the prizes. So make sure you make comments so you get entered to win. Okay, so now I'm going to switch the camera over. I know, aren't those cute? I, they, they are actually really fun to make. And somebody asked me if I do a video on how I made it in design, because I actually made that in Design Center as well. And we will do a class on that, yes. So I'll show you how I actually made the ironing pad. I'll either do it as a separate video or we'll just do it in a class. Okay. So yes, I will be doing that. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I very rarely get through a whole sewing session without seeing my seam ripper. So, you know, I think we're all, we all understand that very well. So it happens. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera over and let's talk about some um, some owls here. Just a second. I got to find my right camera. Okay. And the microphone. Okay. So hopefully you can hear me. Okay. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do first is we need to talk about our fabrics. So now, I've done a few of these already, and we talked a little bit about the fabric for the appliques last week, but we need several pieces, and I have the, um, the sizes here if you want to cut them out in advance so you don't have to um, just kind of guess. I kind of measured, I opened up the design in my software and just kind of figured out how big each of the pieces needed to be, so um, the body part, so the first part that we're going to do is this larger body part and it I made it four by six but I also just so you know mine was kind of light colored so I put a piece of shape flex on the back of it as well because mine was a little light colored and his little the little you know ears go up onto the um, darker green border so I just went ahead and put some shape flex on the back of this since it was so light colored so that's four by six you need one of those that's for the underbody and then the wings i made light gray and i didn't put any shape flex on this because it's dark enough and this is the wings his wings then 
and I made that four by six. The outer eyes, so there's like three layers to his eyes. So the outer part of his eyes, I made this kind of gold yellow, and I didn't put any shape flex on that either. Okay, so there's that. And then the the there, he has black and white in his eyes, so there's a piece of black that I made. This piece was the outer eyes was three by four. And the black part was two and a half by three and a half. Okay. And yeah, you, any of your light fabrics definitely put some shape flex on it. It really helps when you have darker fabrics underneath. So, um, so, so those are the, the first two layers of the eyes. And then the, the top layer of the eyes is in white. So again, I put shape flex on the back of this as well. And that is one and a half by two and a half. So that kind of gives you, so the white is one and a half by two and a half. The black is a little bigger, two and a half by three and a half. The gold part of the eyes, the outer eyes are three by four piece. And that was that gold. And then the gray is four by six for his wings. And then his body was also four by six. And then I put shape flex on the back of that. Okay, so that's the pieces we need for our owl. Okay, so I'll move those out of the way. Put my pin down so I don't stab myself with it. Okay, and then the other thing that, of course, we need, just like we've done with the other ones, you need to print yourself out a template. And this really helps when you're doing the embroidery. I like to print out a template, and I used my template material, which is called um, print and stick. This is the, the dime print and stick, and I think the Floriani is called template tearaway. And it's the same stuff. So what's nice about this is I can print this out, trim it down a little bit, and then it's tacky on the back so it's repositionable. So I can use it over and over again. Okay, so this will be the eighth time I've used this one because I have done two of these. Okay, so I've got that printed out. Um, the other thing that we have done is, you know, when you print it out, remember, I'll put, show you on the screen here, there is a little placement line right here that's in the pattern. And of course, that's going to print out on the paper. So what I've been doing, since we have our top already sewn together, you know, that quarter inch seam is already out of there. So I cut, again, where that, that outline was, I cut up a quarter of an inch from my red, it, it kind of shows red on the screen, red line that printed here so that I know I've got that seam allowance removed so I can just put this right down on the corner right along my seam here, okay? So I just cut that quarter of an inch off here above the line and a quarter inch above the line at the, on this side where, where the placement line is, like we've done before. So we've been doing that. There was one we didn't because of the way it laid out. And actually I ran into another one when I did the last two designs, one of those, we can't cut it off either. There's something about, I don't know why, if it wasn't the, the placement line wasn't right or something, but I did not cut it off. I think it was the November one. So we'll talk about that when we get there. So, all right, so here's our owl. Now, this one does have a lot of colors in it and a lot of appliques. So what I did to make it easier and faster was, um, I just put in regular bobbin thread in my bobbin and I put white thread in the needle so that and I did all the appliques with white okay and went with saying that normally I use um, pre-wound bobbins so for so for those of you who have you know are using pre-wound bobbins and and need to change your bobbin case out like this is the the bobbin case with the blue dot in it normally with for my pre-wounds i have to put this bobbin case in but i also know then that i have to use bobbins with embroidery thread in it and i don't want to have to you know pull the bobbin cases in and out too so what i do is i keep a spool of the regular brother bobbin thread around and i just wound a couple of my own bobbins with the brother bobbin thread so i can just leave my regular bobbin case in this is the one that has like the green screw you know the little screw thing here is green painted kind of so i have the regular bobbin case in here so when anytime you wind your own bobbins whether it be embroidery thread or bobbin thread 
or like embroidery thread, like we're going to use matching thread on the back, of course. So I have all my bobbins wound. I have black, gray, two colors of yellow, and then there's an orange because he has a beak, and then some white for his eyeballs, around his eyeballs, okay? So I have wound a bobbin of each one of my colors that I use for my fabrics. And what I did is I just kind of looked at my fabric and I just picked a color that matched these fairly well, okay? So I'll tell you the colors I used as we go here. But I went ahead and wound a bobbin of, of bobbin thread, regular bobbin thread, so that I didn't have to change my bobbin case in the middle of class. Because, you know, with it's, it's a little, it takes a little time, you know, flip your bobbin case off, pull it out, push, push it in. So I just didn't want to have to do that. So that's what I do when I, whoops, where'd my bobbin door go? Here it is. Um, I do that when I know that I'm going to be using embroidery thread in my bobbin regularly through my project. That way I don't have to pull the bobbin case in and out. So, all right. All right. Oh yeah, this is a really nice, this is a really nice book. This is a really good, good book. So this is the older one. So these are the older ones. All right. So now I'll tell you what colors I'm using when we get to the um, applique part. So let's just go ahead and let's get started doing this. So we're going to pull this in. Whoops, got to get the right corner here. Okay. So here is my design. I'm going to show you the design on the screen here quickly. So he's kind of tipped this way. So you know when you put him on, you want to make sure that he matches the, the little template here. Okay. So here's my little guy, this over here. And I'm going to put these little, I put the arrows here where it, what goes on the corners. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up with the corner the, right on my seam. Oh, and by the way, a lot of people ask me what I quilted this in. And this is quilted in the um, clear blue tiles. This one's the swirl. So I just used one of the clear blue tile files. I like the swirl. So if I don't have one that's very specific for it, um, and there are a couple of nice autumn ones that you can purchase, um, but I thought it might, they, they were a little busy. So I thought maybe they'd be a little too much with all this applique on here. So I decided just to do one that was a little more, um, just, just a little softer and not as busy. So this is swirl off of the clear blue tiles. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead. So I've got my white embroidery thread in my needle. I have my bobbin thread that I wound myself, my brother bobbin thread in the bobbin. And I'm trying to find the top of my hoop. Here it is. Okay. So I am using my six by my six by ten snap hoop. This works so well. This this fits perfectly in a six by ten hoop. So what I'm going to do here, move all these appliques out of the way. I am going to kind of pull this down so that my needle is roughly over the center of my little snowman. I got the snowman in the center there. We're going to use a snowman tonight. Going to get him roughly in the center there. Have a little wiggle room. It's about um, six by six, so not a ton of wiggle room. You have to be fairly close. Not so much up and down, but side to side, you got to be fairly close. So we're going to get him lined up here. There we go. That's pretty good. Make sure that the sides of your hoop are well aligned so nothing will slide on you. I love it when I can use a six by six by 10 hoop because it's my one of my favorites and it's easy to use. It's not real big, but it's big enough. Okay, so there he is. So now we're ready to do our centering with the snowman. So I'm going to go ahead and hit layout, maybe. And here's my snowman. We're going to touch the snowman. I'm going to tell it OK. And then I'm going to hit scan. So is everybody doing better with their snowman now? It's pretty easy. So for those of you who watch um, Shields Live on Thursdays, make sure you join me tomorrow because we're going to talk about the new stuff that Brother has out. But Tim's still down in um, in Austin for the um, Brother schooling, and he is um, he will be back, I believe, on Friday. So he's been we've been we're gonna I'm gonna try to do the best the best 
I can with all the new stuff for what little information I have. So we're going <laughs> to tell you about what's going on with, and uh, hopefully have a little surprise for you too at the end. So, all right. So it's finding the spot. Hopefully I got it straight now. Oh, yay. So it says remove the embroidery positioning mark. I am done. It is centered. So if you look here, you can see centered right on my snowman. And I'm just going to take this whole thing off. And I'm ready to sew. I love my snowman. So a lot of people have the snowman because, you know, it has been in the machines for some time. So you, a lot of you will have this. Okay. So I also need to skip through. We don't want to sew out that, that little placement line. So we're going to skip through that. So I'm going to go ahead, hit my layout again. And then we're going to go down here to the negative positive needle. We're going to go down to the second step, which is going to be the placement line for his body. So we're going to, I've got my white threads in. And I just got bobbin thread in the bobbin. Since, since we have to do all this applique, it'll all be covered up in a minute. So, all right. So we're going to do our placement line for the body. And this is going to be my yellow. That's kind of my plaid here. Maureen, you said you use your snowman all the time. You know, I do too. And a lot of people tell me, oh, I don't know how to use it. But um, if you watch my videos, I have a lot of videos that we use the snowman. And it's really very easy. And I've got several videos for you. Those of you who have the Stellaire's. I also have videos on how to use that. Yes. So who said, is that Cindy? Yes, Cindy. There. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. So if you have time tomorrow, come visit. Um, and it'll be on YouTube also. But yes, there is a, there is an upgrade for the people that with the Stellaire's, the XE ones and the XJ ones. And it's going to give you a couple more tools and then some of the stuff that the Luminaire actually has. So I was very impressed by that. So All right. So we're going to lay this down. It's a little hard to see because it's white, so I kind of know where it is. So I'm just going to lay it down. I'm going to try to keep my plaid fairly straight, so I'm using my border up here to help me. I think we're good. So then the second step is going to be our tack down. Oh, don't be afraid of it, Amanda. Just, just which uh, which machine do you have? Don't be afraid of it. It's super easy. Did you see me just use it? It's so easy. It is the coolest little thing, and I use it all the time for quilting and, like, this kind of stuff. It's so fast. Just You saw how fast I did this. Okay, that's fine. I will be – we will have it on YouTube um, later, Cindy, so you can watch about the new stuff. So I don't know too much about it yet, and I don't think it's going to be available for a little while. Um, it's – one thing said November, one said December, so it may be a little, a couple of months yet. I'm sorry about that. All right, so I'm going to pull this out a little bit so I can get to this. So we're going to trim this close to the stitches. And this has got two little pieces. He's got, you know, the bottom part of his body, and then there's uh, his little ears at the top here, so... Horns, are they, what do they call them for owls? Is it ears or horns? They look like little horns on the top of their head. But I don't know much about birds. You guys know about owls? All right. So get that trimmed. The, um, but yeah, the, the Stellaire has quite a few new things. They added the couching to the to the Stellaire. So we've been doing the, you know, the Luminaire will do the um, couching, embroidered couching, and they added that to the, to the Stellaire, which I thought was cool. And then there's a, one new feature that the Luminaire doesn't have. I didn't quite understand what it was. I need to go back and read it a little bit more. Once I get the machine, I'll be able to figure it out. But, You know, we don't get all the, we don't get everything right away. It takes usually a little bit to get everything. So I don't think I'm doing very well with my trimming, am I? Let's see if I can get this turned. It's a little hard for me to trim with this long hoop in the machine so you can see what I'm doing. I have to kind of do calisthenics here. There we go. All right. 
There's our first applique. Okay. Then the second piece of applique is going to be his wings over here. So I'm just going to leave my white thread in and we're going to sew his wings. Owls have ears. Cool. Thank you. How many machines do I have? Um, I'm kind of embarrassed to say I have three home embroidery sewing machines. So I have a Luminaire, a 5200, and an old 1500D. But then I also have a PR1055, and I have a long arm. Software? I use mostly the um, I use mostly the Dime software. Is that Gail or no Melody? I'm sorry, Melody. That's a, a, I use mostly the Dime software. So this is the gray. His wings kind of go this way. So I'm going to lay it kind of sideways, and I got to make sure I get it right side up here. This is a little bit hard to tell. It's very close on both sides. So so I'm going to make sure I get that all covered up. Okay. Now there is not shape flex on the back of this and it's fine. So I like the dime software, the dime perfect embroidery pro software. That's the software I use most of the time. And I teach mostly that software. Yeah. The, and I actually do have a, I forgot. I, I also have a, um, a little singer featherweight but i don't really sew on it it just it just for looks it's cute all right now we're going to trim these so this made the they actually getting the appliques on here easier by not having to switch the colors of the bobbin and everything and we'll switch it when we do this the satin stitching Because we want the back of our, our table topper to be all beautiful. Oops. Oh, I didn't do very well there, did I? There we go. The cat decided she needed to sit on my lap when I started, right before I started teaching. So now I have black slacks on. And so my black slacks are covered in orange hair. <laughs> I keep looking down and it's like I got this puddle of orange hair on my slacks. All right. I think mostly she wanted, I can't say it, otherwise she'll want more, T-R-E-A-T-S's. So she came in and, and decided she needed to have loving and then wanted, you know, more. So, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have a lot of machines. I'm kind of a collector, although I use all my machines. So, you know, if you use them all, you know, that's, and I, and you know, I mean, that's, that's the thing. That's what you're there for, right? Is to use them. I use my machines. I use all of them. Okay. All right. So that we got our, our little owl wings done. And I think the next step is going to be the under the, the biggest piece of the eyes. So that's going to be this gold color. So it's just going to go around here between the ears and his and his body here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm not the only one that has many machines. A couple of my machines are old though, you know, like like my 1500D. That machine's like I don't know, 15 years old. So and I've got an old PR that's not really mine. It, Tim took it as a trade. And there's a, we got an old original PR 600 at the store that I sew on. Because he didn't want to sell it, it's you know it's got a floppy disk in it. But I, I sewed on it today. We made a hat on it. Which I had to give a lesson, so I made a hat on it today, and it sews great. All right, so now we're going to trim this. This one didn't have um, this one didn't have shape flex on it either. Oh, you had choir practice, Connie. It sounds like fun. I haven't sang in a choir for a long time. I like to sing. A 
we had a, I think we, I'm not, I think there's still a sweet Adeline's um, ch chapter here in Iowa City. I always thought that'd be fun to do sweet Adeline's. All right, oops, second here, I got a big glump there. All right, so there's the under part of his eyeballs. And then the next part is going to be the black part. So we'll do the placement line for that. Well, that's the thing, Jackie. If you use them, that's the important part. Um, Cindy, they make they make one for the the well, it was the persona, but there's a new machine called the Entrepreneur One. The flat machines like this, no, they don't. Not really. Um, uh, Dime has a snap hoop, like a five by seven snap hoop, and then a cap clip that works with it, and that works pretty well. But you got to flatten the hat out, so you kind of got to watch what type of hats you buy. Um, there's also orange cat hair on my black fabric here, so I got to get some of it off, so it won't be in my project. <laughs> my cat, my cat likes to leave little orange hairs everywhere. All right, so we'll get that one on there, and we'll stitch this one down. You still have your 60-year-old boss? <laughs> I see those regularly, Carol. <laughs> we get a lot of repairs, and I see a lot of old sewing machines. Almost every day. You still have two inverted machines with the floppy disks, yeah? My, my old PR, the, the floppy doesn't work in it, but I can still use a compact flash card, which I have compact flash cards, and I also can use the Brother card in it and I use that I have to tell you a sad story though I bought my PE design software I'm trimming here I bought my PE design software in 2001 it was version 5 and it had that little you know US that was the first one that had the little USB box we were so excited we had a USB you know instead of the serial port box on it and um the other day i was trying to use i've got a couple disney cards yet and you can't put the cards in the machines anymore you know there's no card slots in the new machines they took them out and so i i needed to use my baby poo card and um and my box wouldn't work and i'm like oh no what am i gonna do my poor box my poor old box and um so I took it to work and we kind of looked at it and Tim looked at it and I looked at it and we discovered that there's a couple of the pins, you know, the little cards go in and there was little pins inside and the pins, a couple of the little pins broke in my box. So that little box I've been carrying around, it still opens the software, but I just can't write any cards in it. And I still need it because I have two machines that still need cards. <laughs> So we still had one at the store I could use. So my poor box that's 20 years old, I got it in 2001, it's over 20 years old, has finally gone back to the, whoops, second here, what did I do? Oh, I attached the frame, Jan. Isn't it nice we have smart sewing machines that tell us all this? I was so disappointed because I've been so careful with that box all these years, you know. It still opens the software, which is the main thing, but I just can't write a card with it. So I had to... We had another one at the store, so I have it now because it works for writing cards. And I can use my Disney cards now because they fit. So, All right, so I've got my piece of white now. This is for the whites of his eyes, and this is going to be um, got some shape flex on the back, too. So, yeah, that was my sad little story from this week. I was so disappointed. I've been so careful, and that little box has been with me all over the place. And, you know, when I went to classes, it went with me in my bag, and it's been everywhere for 20 years, and it finally has to stay home in a box now. So I've got another one that works. All right. And actually, years ago, my sewing machine got zapped by, by, um, by lightning, and so Tim had to replace a couple of boards in my one of my original machines. And so um, my card was in the machine when it got zapped, so it zapped my card too. And a friend of mine let me have her card because she never used it. And I've got that, I've still got that card and that card has to be at least 15 years old. So it, it works though. All 
All right, so let's get this trimmed. I'm not doing very well with this one, am I? Sometimes it's hard to trim in the hoop. I like to be able to, when I'm not on camera, I try to like pull it out so you can kind of, <laughs> you know, I can pull it out so I can get to it, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. All right, this is the last applique though. So we're done trimming. And now we're gonna do the satin stitches. Okay, so the first satin stitch is actually gonna be the black. Yeah, you can plug like the box. Yes, the box. Um, I plug it into my sewing machine, and it will and it will read the the cards. Yes, so that's what I have to do. But my box wouldn't read cards anymore because it had broken pins in it. That's what the problem was. So okay, so now we're ready to do satin stitching. So of course we want our thread to match the back. So we're gonna do black first. It's actually gonna do this part first. So I'm gonna put black thread. I've got black bobbin or embroidery thread on my bobbin here and we're going to put that in first put that back on and then we're going to switch to black on the top but i want to show you something else here before i go on i like to do yep it does you can you can just use your p design box um they actually made a separate box that was just for reading cards for like the quattros i think um, but I've always, you can use your P design box or your PD basic boxes also. All right. So I got my black thread in there, but I wanted to show you, pull this back a little bit. I like to carefully tip this up and I like to trim all those little knots that it made back here. Cause I don't want any of those knots to show through my, um, all those little you know, starts and stops when we were doing the piecing. So I always like to trim these all off before I go on because then it covers up nicely with the satin stitching. So I'm just going to trim these off the back here. So I do this on basically all of mine when I'm, you know, if I'm doing something that's going to have matching thread in the back. So I'm just going to get these trimmed off so there's not so many of them hanging out. There's quite a few on this one. See if I can get this one. For some reason, I can't get this one to behave here. I usually lay this down, but I wanted you to see what I was doing. <laughs> I usually lay it down in my lap, but to do this. All right. So that should help so that it's not so messy on the back. Okay. So I like to do that just to make it neater on there. All right. So now we're going to move on to the black so we're going to do our black satin stitching first and then i think it goes and does the white oh you learned yeah i learned to sew, to sew with my grandma on her treadle machine too and i have her treadle machine it does i don't imagine it works anymore but um it might if i had it serviced it might work but it uh, of course i just dropped my scissors too um I really, I, I just like it. I love, really like the cabinet. Her cabinet was kind of unusual for the time, and it's pretty. So I use it as like an end table. It's in my back bedroom with my, my grandma had, a, it was at my folks' house. And so my dad, my dad had it, you know, until I brought it home. And it was a, it's a Tiffany style lamp. It's not a Tiffany lamp but it's a Tiffany style lamp and, and it probably is worth something. I don't know. I don't know much about them, but it's pretty. And it's, and I, I have it sitting on grandma's, um, grandma's sewing machine cabinet. So it was grandma's lamp and actually it was her mother's lamp. So it was my great grandmother's lamp originally. So I've got my matching thread in there and I think the next one, I think it goes and does the white next, I believe see if I can find my white. Hopefully I got, I don't know if I got enough bobbin thread. I may have to, I'll probably stop in the middle and I'll have to wind the bobbin, you know. You could put just regular bobbin thread in there for the white. It doesn't show that much, but I, I know I use regular embroidery thread. Yeah, the treadle machines, you had to learn a lot of things about them because they, you know, if you, if you, 
they were a little hard to thread and you had to like the, the things that grandma always taught me is you always had to have the needle down in the fabric before you started sewing because and in fabric otherwise you'd unthread the machine because of the way it worked you know so we, we learned a lot about basic sewing skills <laughs> when i started i remember i think i was about eight when she would put me on her lap she she would treadle she wouldn't let me treadle though all right so yes it's the white so i'm going to go ahead and put my white hopefully i have enough i don't know if i have enough to get around we'll see okay so i'm going to move remove my black buck embroidery thread and put my white in like i said we may be winding a little bit of bobbin thread change but to my white so it's going to do the insides of his eyes this one had quite a few thread changes so that's what takes a little longer but the part it wasn't hard it was just had quite a few parts to it so i did do the other three um owls ahead of class so that they were done because i knew it would take a while to do just one i spent one evening i came home one evening and just sat and made owls all right, so we're going to do the white satin stitching. And I think it goes back to the black of the eyes next, if I remember correctly. Looking at, trying to look at my instructions. Yeah, the eye center, so it's going to go back to black, so we'll change back to black. I am using embroidery thread. And there's embroidery thread in the bobbin also. Um, this is the brother thread. So the white, I'm using white and black of the brother threads. It's uh, one, it's uh, 001 is white and 900 is black. And then we're going to be using, I'll tell you the other colors as we're going here. So I've got a silver and a, and a couple of yellows. So I really, I thought he, I thought these turned out really cute. And I kind of liked, I was surprised. Oopsie. There we go. We got a wind bobbin, guys. So I'm going to, so this is a good thing because on this machine, there's a little thing and it's the reinforcement or in other words, it's going to tie off. I'm just going to tie a knot. Not all the machines have this. The luminaires do. So I'm just going to cut. So I tied and then I cut. Okay. And then I get down here to get my bobbin thread. Okay, so I did that first so that I know that it's not going to come out since it was satin stitch. I didn't have much left on there, did I? Just a little bit. So we'll put this up here and wind a little bit. I, I thought about winding one right before and I forgot. I was looking, I was answering YouTube posts. People like, I like to keep track of people. You know, when people ask me things, I like to make sure I get back to people. So we'll wind a little bit of bobbin thread here. Don't need too much. See if I can get it to, I don't need too much. It's almost around. That should be enough. All right. So here is my white again. Yeah, I was like, I really liked it that they added this feature because, you know, we've never had that tie off feature we could use while we were embroidering. You know, we could use, um, so I'm going to back up a couple stitches. Okay. So we're going to go here and we're going to back up maybe 20 stitches. Okay. Just to make sure everything's covered. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Let's rethread the machine here. I was really happy when they added this because this is something I've always wanted is I wanted to be able to reach up here and tie off when I started again, because otherwise sometimes my satin stitches wanted to come out, you know, Oh, cool. Hi, Marianne. Hi. Right. So now we're off again. So we had to do about half of it. So hopefully I have enough thread this time. I've been known to have to stop the second time <laughs> and wind more bobbin thread. But yeah, this is a nice feature. So that was something that it's good if I want to do, I can show you something else on the machine. So the, but the luminaires have that and most of the other machines don't. So what I do, if I don't have that feature, I try to back up maybe 20 to 30 stitches 
so that I've got plenty of overlap covering so it's not going to come out. That's, we've all been doing that for years if you've had a machine for a long time. So, But I do like that reinforcement that I can tie off now. And I think we got, yeah, we got to go back to the black because that's what we're going to do is eyeballs so he can see here. All right. Yeah, so Tim and I took my little P design box apart and I got it apart. And, and uh, I could see after I got my, like a magnifying glass, you know, they're like down in a little hole and you can't really see. So I finally got it apart and I looked down in there and there was two pins missing. You know, like I said, it is 20 years old. It's done, it's done well. <laughs> and it still opens my software. So if I need to use it, I can just open my software. I just can't put a card in it anymore. But all right, we'll put the black back in to do his eyeballs. Take the white out. I don't think we need the white anymore. Oops. It's like I need to pull off a little piece of thread here. Let's trim this while we're in here. That. Right. And then we need the black. So all we've used is black and white so far. We'll get into some prettier colors pretty soon here. All right, so let's do his little eyeballs. Yeah, I was, you know, I was... Tim, Tim laughed at me and he says, Jan, it's 20 years old. It's okay. I said, well, not when you need it. Because <laughs> I still have my 1500D needs a card written for it. And so does that old PR. Now the PR, I can use the um, that compact flash card thing. So I do have that. Um, I do have that that I can use. So that I've got all the, some cards and a couple of readers for that. So. Okay. Looks like we have a little tail sticking up here. We'll cut that off. Oh, good, Clara. Yeah, your machine has that too. Your Solaris has that too. Same thing. And then there's a little message that comes up on the screen to remind you to do that. So, So it's going through quite a few layers. I noticed, I think I need a new needle maybe. Yeah, so Tim laughed at me. He said, he said, it's okay, Jan, it's 20 years old. I said, well, I do need to write my, I need to write my cards. And, and so he, uh, so I still have, I still have something that will write cards. Oh, good. Now we get to go on to a prettier color. So we're going to go on to the, the, the lighter yellow I used. Yes, my my bobbin thread is the same as my top thread. So I'm using embroidery thread in the bobbin. I've wound a bobbin of each color. So this is my lighter yellow, and this is the Fashion Gold, or no, Fashion Glow 1321. And this is these are brother colors. So I'm going to take that bobbin and put it in now. So we'll slide this out. So there's a little bit of in and outing for this little guy, but... That's why it takes a little while, but the back sure looks nice. And you don't have to do this. I just like the mat, the back to match. So you can just use bobbin thread if you want to. Not too many people are actually going to see the back because, you know, it's probably going to be sitting on the table, you know. All right. Do this, and then I'm going to switch to that yellow. So you do have to change. I've been changing, you know, I changed my bobbins and made it look pretty on the back. So this will be for Judy. So I want to make it look pretty for her. All right. So now we're ready for, it's going to do his little ears and then down along his, down along his body here. Yes. So yes, Carol, I use, I have matching embroidery thread in my bobbin. One thing about Kimberbell, they always do a really good job of um, cover stitching, you know, like the satin stitching for their 
their um, raw edges. It's always really nice. They do a nice thick one. So I'll use that one. And then I think, I don't remember what it does next. I think it might do the wings next, possibly. If I look at my instructions, I think it tells me. Satin out one body. Yeah, the wings are next. So we're going to use the gray next. this some of these string I gotta find my gray bob and here we go so we're gonna get this one done so is everybody how how many people are working on the cuties are you working on them getting some of them done they're kind of fun to do I mean they do take a little time but you know they've been really fun and I've got them all done now so I finished the um, November and December one, I think I showed them to you last week. And then I have January's done that we'll do in December, but I have to fix the design yet. You just have January left to do? Yep, so I have January done too, but I have to do a little bit of work on the on the um, on the design yet. And I have all the kits cut, which is the other important part for me. <laughs> That's the hardest part for me is getting all the kits cut. because so, I had to cut well you know I told I, somebody said well how many of these have you made and I said well when I get all done I'll have made 24 because I made each one twice <laughs> yeah Jackie you you uh you uh actually had SVG files on your CD that you could have cut out it may not have been quite so trying <laughs> did you get it done though were you able to get it to work Yeah, I usually don't cut. I usually just cut pieces. You know, these are not very hard shapes, so I don't normally pre-cut everything. And you can if you want to, certainly. February, March. Oh, and you've got some of the cuties too done. Yep. I just don't, I don't cut everything, especially if they're not real difficult shapes, because sometimes it's just faster for me to put it down in the hoop and trim it. So I usually do so often. You got one done? Well, that's good. That's one less that you have to do, Amanda. Very good. All right. So let's go look at, you know, we need, um, this is the wing. So this is going to be the gray. And my gray is actually silver. It's 005 silver. So I'm going to put that in the bobbin here. Got a bobbin wound to that. So I wound all my bobbins ahead of time. Except, of course, the one that ran out. Okay. Oh, so you had to shrink it down a little bit? Yeah, the stuff that was in the book was actually for the machine applique. So this, remember, the, the, the book that we're doing the patterns out of are, is actually the original sewing pattern. And the applique would have been machine applique that you would have driven around it. With your sewing machine okay so now we're ready for the for the little wings here so that's done in that 005 silver Did, are you still quilting yours jackie on your on your uh long arm or have you been quilting some of them on your machine on your embroidery machine I've been enjoying the clear blue tiles. I didn't, we were talking about it. I was talking about it with a customer today. And, and you know, when I first, when they first came out, I wasn't sure what I thought, but I'm, I'm really, you know, I really like them now. And I like the fact that they don't join. Um, I like the fact that they appear seamless, but you don't have to try to get them to line up, you know, cause, cause no matter how hard I try, I very often, have a little gap between the starting and stopping point, you know, on the other ones. Um, and I, I really like, I really like the fact that the 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 Kimberbell ones don't. 
they look like they're joined, but they're not. And then you don't have that little spot. So like if your thread is kind of contrasty, often, you know, often you would see where it started and stopped. Oh, cool. You, you used this one, you did this one on the long arm too? They are so fast in the long arm, I bet they are. What takes me the longest, Jackie, is actually loading the long arm. <laughs> But I got new, I got new long arm parts. Um, my long arm was an older frame. I have a pearl frame, and I think Jackie, you have the same frame as I do. But I found out that the ends of the kinetic frame work on my on my long arm frame. So now I have a dead bar, so I don't have to raise and lower the back bar anymore. It's awesome. Yeah, I really like the clip tiles now. I've really, I use them quite a lot now. And these have been perfect because it's so quick. You know, it's like six hoopings and it's quilted, you know. Oh, cool. You, you used yours, Amanda? That's wonderful. Yeah, they are, they are really fun to use. And once you get the hang of it, you just have to kind of use them a little bit. And now I can quilt anything. I will I'll send you a picture, Jackie. I went up to put a uh, long arm up in a lady's house, and I was looking at her long arm table, and it's the legs are different on the new table, but I started looking at the part numbers, and all the parts are exactly the same as mine and Jackie as yours. So all you have to do is just replace the ends, and it and then you have a dead bar. It's awesome because <laughs> then you don't have to raise and lower that back part and i know yours is in a place isn't it that you can't easily get to the back of it so um it's so neat because this way you just reach up and you crank the little turning handle and it works really great so anyway i'll send you a picture i got i used it on my new quilt for the first time so i was praying that everything worked okay and um and my quilt turned out all right <laughs> So we're doing wings, and then I think the next, I don't remember if it's the, I think it must be the yellow. Is that the last, the dark yellow? Is that the last one we have to do? Oh, and we have to do is beak. Oh, yeah, crawling underneath there. You have to crawl under, yeah. So, that, so that's what's nice. It's, it's hard for me to reach. I have a hard time getting my bar up and down in the back, and so I thought, well, if I could do this with this other situation, it is it makes it wider. That's the only disadvantage is it does make it wider because it's for a 20 inch machine, but instead of only an 18, but um, I can deal with that. It made it so easy. No, after class, I'll send you a picture, Jackie. Actually, we're getting about done. There's only about four minutes left. Wow. Once you get through the all the appliques, it goes pretty quick. Yeah, and you're down, you're kind of down in the basement, aren't you still? And it's probably hard floor too, which doesn't help. I do, Carol. I have almost all the stuff that's at work is on is my stuff. So I did not take this quilt, the Christmas quilt that I just finished this weekend. That that one's mine, so I left it at home because I. My walls are white. <laughs> I really don't have anything hung up here. Almost everything's at work. All right, so the last part is this going to be as around his eyeballs here. And then we'll do his beak. Let me get this. And we're going to do the darker yellow. So that one is, let's see. This is the darker yellow. Let's see what the color number is here just a second. That's the bobbin. Let's see, that is uh, golden hair, 1334. So it's a little bit darker, kind of a gold yellow. Put that in. Oh, yeah, good, good, Connie. Yeah, I really like, I really like the clear blue tiles. And, ap and, you know, after you use them a few times, it's just really easy to work with them. And I've just been so happy, like these table toppers just work great with them. 
So small stuff like this is so nice. You can quilt it, you know, like I said, I think these take six, six hoopings. So, you know, it's just really nice and it doesn't take long. And all right, so now we're gonna do his eyes, the outside part of his eyes. Got my bobbin in there. And then I think the last one's gonna be his beak. So I gotta find the orange here. I really do like them. I, it took me a long time. I didn't buy them. It took me probably over a year before I bought them. And I thought, and they sent me like a little sample. Like you, I got a couple of tiles that I could do a couple things with. You know, they sent it to the store and I tried it. And I thought, yeah, this works okay, you know. And, and then I started working with these. I did a couple of these and I thought, gosh, that really works. Because I just happened to get the one tile that worked with these. So I did my first one with it, and I'm like, oh, wow, these actually work really well. So that's when I bought them. It took me about a year. So he's going to look pretty handsome. I kind of liked the yellow. I like the little plaid in here. Oh, cool. Did you make the, the table toppers? Lynn, yeah, sweet. So, um... That's one of the things that I'm considering making next year on So Long With Jan is doing the four seasonal table toppers that are in the um, clear blue tile um, book because they are kind of cute. And I've been wanting to make them and I thought, well, maybe we could just make them together because there's one for each season. Got a couple else other things planned as well. So I'm, I'm working on some stuff. Gonna have to start making samples pretty soon. Can't believe I'm working on January classes already. I have like, I, I went through and looked and I only have three classes I have to get ready for the whole year, the rest of the year. Yeah, I think those will be fun. Oh, you mean my table toppers? On the, yeah, you know, I just, I don't post a lot, Cindy. I really should. I just never, I'm not a big, I, I use Facebook as a more of an educational tool. So I don't post much except in the group, our group, you know, like where we are now. Um, but I really should because I've made a lot of Kimberbell projects. Oh, to do, oh, to get your centers done. Yeah, I, sometimes math is the hardest part, I have to say. Yeah, these are really fun. I, I I have them all done, so I can I can post them. Every time I do like quilting, like especially when I was using the Amelie Scott edge to edge quilting, you had to do quite a lot of math for that method to, to get it to come out right. And um, so I had to really be careful that I was doing it correctly. So. Um, this one is not as hard because you can kind of, I just kind of do some basic math when I do this so that I can kind of see what tile works the best. Like that's kind of evenly divisible is the way I kind of do it. So that's why, you know, when, if you go back and watch the video on the quilting of this, um, then I kind of tell you how I do it. Cause I just kind of picked the one that was sort of evenly divisible to the 22 inches, which in this case was the eight by 12. And it worked really great. So, all right. So now we're ready for his beak. So I got to have some orange here. So get my orange bobbin. And I think it's number, let's see, it's number, oh, it is. It's 126 pumpkin is the orange. So this is one of my favorite oranges. One of the old colors, the old original colors. All right, so we'll get ready to do the beat, and then we'll be done. I can put some binding on it tomorrow, maybe. All right. So here's his beak. <laughs> yeah, that there was quite a lot of math with the Amelie Scotts. I don't do that method as much. But I do really like the designs, so I actually use those in my long arm. I converted them to my long arm format, so I use her designs in my long arm a lot because they are really pretty. And I've got other ones too, 
like the one I used for my Christmas quilt was one from my Creative Stitches. So it was a different one, but um, I do like to use the Amelie Scott ones in my long arm because they, they work great for that. They do take a little longer because they're a little more detailed than some long arm designs, but they work very well in there. All right, so let's get this. He's got a little tail in the middle of his nose here. All right, let's take this off. Oh, yeah, the, the luminary is awesome. You still have a card reader? Yeah, you got a little, oh, you got a PE 300? That's one I never I never had. Okay, so now he's he needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So we're gonna we're gonna trim now. Be careful and don't trim through, don't trim through the knots. Just trim the little tails off. So he's got quite a few little tails because he had a bunch of colors here. So we're just gonna trim these off. Neaten him up on the back. And there's a couple little tails that I I had trouble getting off before. So we'll see if we can get those down in here. you want the back look to look nice so there we go oops i think i missed one down here there's still a little tail hanging out over here All right. so there is our owl so he looks nice on the back there he is on the back okay and then here are all four of them done on the front i did a couple of these the other night so i'd have them all done they just take a little while. So, you know, we've been working on this for about an hour. It takes about an hour to do each one. I mean, not quite, but pretty close because you just have to do some switching when you're switching your colors and stuff. Isn't he cute? And then uh, I think this one, let me see what I've got for binding here. Yep, I got the green for the binding. I think I've got yeah, the same binding I have on the other one. So there's my green binding, but I'll put that on tomorrow. And I can't remember, I must have had some green that matched that pretty well. Let me look here. Let's take a look at the finished one here. Here's the finished one. So it looks like I had a green that matched pretty close, so I used that. Yes, it. you know, it is worth the effort because then we could quilt it beforehand. And I, Jan just is not a very good... Um, free motion quilter and you know if you it put the appliques on like they said and then had to free motion I, I would have a hard time with that so this was way easier and then it just looks pretty on the back too so I was good with that when I made one up I thought you know what that looks just fine just looks interesting on the back has some color you know so I thought there's nothing wrong with that I just clean up the little the little knots on the back and it looks beautiful so now it's ready for some binding. So we'll put some binding on tomorrow. I'll have to see if I can find my green that I used. And we'll be ready for having another one done. We've got, this is September's, yay. So next month we'll do um, October's. It's gonna be the it's gonna be the Halloween one with the little witch's hats. It's really cute. Now this one didn't have any other um, embellishments on it. You could, you know, if you wanted to put something on each owl you could if you wanted to have a little bow tie or something on him but i didn't put anything on mine i just thought he looked nice like that so all right so there's our owls we did it i really like those so that is september's cutie all right so next month we'll work on the halloween one and then next week we're gonna do our um zipper bags so we're going to do some zipper bags next week so let me switch my camera over and we need to have a drawing yet second here maybe if i can find the right there we go all right so now we need to have a drawing for where'd he go over here he is from the little mickey hoop pad the little ironing pad so this is going to be the, yeah, the zipper bags are fun. So you will have fun with those. I haven't made them for quite a while, so, but they are really fun to make. And um, I was lucky that I had a friend that had a whole bunch of bags because I just don't, 
it was, I, I knew I was going to have to save up a few bags to do. And she had some larger ones. So um, you can use just like, like those little individual chip bags. Most of mine that I had done were made out of just little chip bags. Cause that's all I had. I ate chips, <laughs> but I didn't eat much candy. So, um, so anyway, it was, it was fun. And Lynn had like some bigger bags. So it's been kind of fun doing these bigger ones. So yes, the Halloween next month will be the Halloween cutie. So um, the directions to make this. Yes. So um, if you, let's see who asked that Connie. Yes. So if you go to my YouTube channel, and the, and the playlist is Shields Live, and it's this little hoop pad. Right under the video, if you click on the, right underneath the video, there's a description area. And if you click on that, there's a link that takes you to the design for this and the instructions. Okay, so this will be the prize. Okay, but so yes, yeah, so go to YouTube. Jan, so along with Jan, go to the playlist Shields Live. And then it's under the hoop pad and it was just last week. It might show up on my main feed too. Okay. And then right under the, the video will be a description area. Just click on it. You might have to say, see more. And then there'll be a, a link in there to get to the instructions and stuff and the design to do this. Okay. And then we'll, we'll do this. Somebody asked me, can we do a video on how to make it this in, in, in IQ designer or design center? And yes, we will. We'll do that too. I may just do a pre-recorded video. I'm not sure yet. So, but I will do that. Okay. So this is going to be the prize. So let me get my tablet here. All right. So make sure you've made comments so you can get entered to win. I got to, I got to swirl my comments here. So I'll see what's, what's, who's going to win tonight. Now, if you're from away from here, Make sure that you personal message me through Facebook and send me your mailing address so that I can mail this to you, okay? No, I haven't, but you know what? I bought those and they are cute. Those pretty and posh um, Kimberbell pouches. Have you seen those guys? Those are really cute. And they have all these cute little zipper. They have like a little zipper embellishment pack that has little leather, little leather tags. No, so no, I haven't, but I would like to do that. They are very cute, okay? Yes, the pretty and posh one. So I'm just going to put my finger down on somebody's name. Okay, my name, my finger went down on Connie Hobbs. Connie Hobbs. So Connie, you're the winner of the little hoop mat. The little ironing pad. So Connie, make sure you send me your your um, mailing address by uh, by personal message on Facebook, and I will send this out to you tomorrow. Okay, congrats, Connie. So Connie Hobbs is the winner. Cool, that's awesome. Okay, so next week we will be working on where did they go? Here they are. We'll be working on the bags. So go collect some, eat some candy, and get your bags ready to make some zipper bags for, and then get some zippers. I can't tell you how much fabric you need. And then what I use, because you know, there depends on the size of your bag. And so you'll need to have a zipper that's at least a couple of inches longer, longer than your bag. So just check your bag, you know, for how long it is. Okay. Um, and then make a, you know, make a zipper that, um, just find a zipper that's a, a couple inches longer. This is, um, I think these were like 14 inch zippers that I used here. And then for, um, and then, you know, and you also need something called Pelon um, Vinyl Fuse. So that's what I put on the outside of the bag because I put Vinyl Fuse on so that it would give it some body, the bags. So Vinyl Fuse, I got it at Joann's and they have two kinds. They have one that's clear, like matte. And then they have one that's glossy. And I usually like the glossy because it's clear and you can read the letters better. The matte is a little bit harder to read things. Okay. So you'll, that's a couple of the things you, you might not have at home that you'll need. The zipper and maybe the, the vinyl fuse. So get some vinyl fuse. And then you'll need some batting, a little piece of batting. You probably have batting at home. That's what I did some quilting on these. So there's batting in here. So we'll quilt it. Okay. Did you find it? 
Oh, great. You found the, you found it. I can't see who's commenting now. Oh, found the YouTube video for the iron pen. Cool. So yes, yeah, so it's it I all of the so just so you know that all of the um Facebook, I don't put as many things on Facebook on the Facebook group, but there's there's the Facebook group for those of you who are in So Along with Jan on Facebook. The top post, which is called the featured post, has the links to all of the files that I have ever put up for the sewing or the, the software classes. So if you need to find something. Make sure you go to the very first, go to the So Along With Jan on Facebook, go to the very top, to the featured pro, the featured post, and then that's where the links are to the Dropbox. So you can get, you can drop, you can download the whole thing at the same time if you want to, okay? So that's where you find them on Facebook. So I don't normally link them with the video. I usually just leave them there because they're all there for you. If you're on YouTube, I always put the link below the video in the description. So you might have to click the button that says see more or, or, or more. Click that so that it opens up and then there'll always be a link to anything that I use in the video, okay? So like the classes or the video, other videos to see that you need that kind of thing is always gonna be there, so, okay? So I will see you next week for candy wrapper zipper bags. Whoops, put it right side up. And we will make have some fun with Design Center, IQ Designer, and candy bags. Garbage, right? You're going to recycle. It's recycling. We're going to make something fun out of garbage. So <laughs> thanks, everybody. It'll be fun. See you next week. Have a good evening.